In 2072 in Moscow, a game show called Mafia is launching its 57th season. As the transmission starts, the game master explains the rules. There are 11 players, 9 of them are civilians and 2 of them belong to the Mafia, but nobody knows who is who. The objective of the civilians is to find and kick out the Mafia, while the Mafia must pretend to be civilians and kick the real ones out. Every day the group will vote on who to kick out, and the chosen person will kill for real by the things they fear the most. Every nightfall another victim will be chosen by the Game Master's drones. The final prize is 1 billion rubles, and if one civilian and one Mafia are left for the last round, the Mafia will automatically take the victory. The players are sitting in a very technologically advanced room and a bunch of drones come in to tattoo a code on the player's wrists, which indicates what is their hidden role. Only the computer has access to this information. While the drones do their job, the Game Master starts introducing some of the players. The first one is Luca, an 85-year-old billionaire who uses modern medicine to look much younger. He's built his fortune by gambling and that's why he's joined the game. He wants the thrill of betting on his life. His spoiled grandchildren are waiting for him to die, but Luca put in his will that if he dies in the game, his grandchildren get nothing. Next is Eli, a 38-year-old engineer who suffers from cancer. He only has three months left to live so Eli came to the game to get money for his family. His wife disagreed with the decision because she wanted him to spend his last days with her and the kids, not to mention she didn't want his death to be on TV, but Eli ignored her concerns. Two players are the prisoners brought directly from jail, Butcher and Ivan, who insists his trial was staged. This is part of a special program the show has with the government that allows every prisoner in the country to volunteer for the game regardless of what crime they committed. If they win, instead of money they get their freedom. The introductions are interrupted for now and the game master asks the players for their roles, but they all swear that they are civilians. Then they're given 10 minutes to vote for the first kill while their friends and family watch every second on TV. Constantine decides not to vote this round, but Marie immediately votes for Killian and Peter gives her his support. At that moment, Butcher realizes he's seen both of them together on TV, and another introduction is made. Marie is a 24 years old famous ballerina and Peter is her number one fan. Unfortunately a rainy day caused Marie's car to crash and her legs got severely damaged, so she couldn't dance anymore. Since those days, her greatest fear has been rain and lightning. There's a major surgery that could give her synthetic legs but it's incredibly expensive, that's why Marie has joined the game. Peter is here because he wants to help her, in fact he sold many personal things to give her money but this only makes Marie cry because he's been following her for years and won't leave her alone. The other players judge her reaction and the fact she has an ally so they immediately vote for her. Peter jumps in her defense and says he's Mafia, but the time runs out and Marie becomes the first chosen victim. Her role is revealed to be civilian, and then her chair begins moving toward a huge black orb on the ceiling. Peter tries to go after her, but his chair keeps him bounded. Inside the mysterious orb, Marie loses consciousness and begins seeing a simulation of her worst fears. She finds herself in the woods during a stormy night, and as soon as lightning begins falling, she starts running away. The lightning goes after her, hitting the trees that surround her to force her to go in the direction of the cliff. Terrified of the storm, Marie sees no option but to jump, but the lightning catches her midair and kills her. At that moment her real body disintegrates in the orb. Afterward the game master announces that the first nightfall is here, and the drones fly over the players to choose the next victim, who turns out to be Butcher. He starts insulting everyone around him as the chair takes him into the orb and a flashback reveals his psychological evaluation before the game. The psychologist had lots of questions, but Butcher wasn't very helpful, he swore he wasn't afraid of anything, but he admitted he didn't want to die like an idiot while being surrounded by other idiots. When the simulation in the orb starts, Butcher finds himself in a very creepy coliseum with two gladiators while the crowd cheers for violence. The gladiators are armed and start beating Butcher up with no mercy, and there's little he can do about it. After they throw him around for a while, Butcher manages to throw some dirt at their faces before grabbing a bottle from the ground that he uses to finally attack back. With a few hits he manages to kill one of the gladiators but the other pushes him away. Butcher doesn't give up and keeps picking up objects from the ground breaking his opponent's bones and killing him only for the guy to keep showing up over and over. After a few kills from Butcher, the gladiator finally stops respawning and everyone in the real prison watching the show begins cheering for their fellow prisoner. Butcher thinks he's won his freedom, but when he steps back, he trips and falls right on some metal rods that instantly kill him. Still angry over Marie, Peter says Butcher deserved it. 
Afterward, the game master announces it's time for the new vote and this time he gives them eight minutes. Constantine announces he already knows who the Mafia are, and this is the moment for his introduction. As a child, he already had clairvoyant abilities, he could predict his bad grades and what girls would cheat on him. People began calling him the Black Messenger and as an adult, he started to appear on parapsychological television shows. He even worked as a consultant during national crises. His greatest fear is to die of old age. Constantine says Peter is Mafia, and Peter responds by wondering why he let Marie die if he has powers that should have told him she was a civilian. Constantine explains he wants the money for himself and not to split it among any remaining civilians, but this only convinces Peter that Constantine is Mafia and votes for him. Eli and Laura vote for Constantine too, but all the others vote for Peter. He turns out to be another civilian, meaning Constantine lied. Another flashback shows Peter's psychological evaluation. At first he said he didn't have any fears except Marie herself, but the psychologist made him think and Peter remembered that as a kid, he feared water. Once the chair takes Peter into the orb, the simulation puts him on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Peter immediately begins rowing to reach the creepy island, but suddenly a hole appears in the boat and when he tries to cover it with his hands, he gets cut. This causes his blood to slip into the ocean and soon the sharks begin swimming around him. A terrified Peter tries to row again but the water is slowly sinking the boat, so he grabs a paddle and stabs a shark with it. The other sharks rush to feed on their dead companion and while they're distracted, Peter jumps into the water and begins swimming to the island. However the island suddenly disappears and the sharks immediately come after Peter to kill him. As he dies, Peter smiles because he thinks Marie's spirit is coming for him. Back to the game, the players are given the chance of an extra vote before nightfall, and this time they have six minutes. As Walter gives his opinion, his introduction also comes through. He's a 45-year-old military officer who has fought in many wars and now he suffers from PTSD. He's joined the game to let it decide if he should live because he still carries the guilt of a tactical mistake he made during the war that caused the death of many young recruits. Walter is familiar with Ivan's case from the news and calls him a child murderer, so Ivan's introduction comes next. He was just an ordinary student that one night went out drinking with some friends. They were driving too fast and lost control of the car, which crashed and killed two of his friends. Ivan and the driver survived thanks to the help of a woman on the street, but the driver's parents made it look like it had been Ivan driving to save their son. Ivan was found guilty and sent to prison, so his greatest fear is to die in jail. Ivan insists he's innocent before telling Laura that she looks familiar, but she swears they don't know each other and accuses Walter of being mafia. Walter accuses her back and soon an argument ensues but Walter cuts it short to vote for Laura. In turn, Laura votes for Walter, which gets the support from Luca, Ivan, and Eli. As a furious Walter begins to rant, Constantine votes for him as well. Since Kieran and Kate's vote won't make a difference, Walter is already chosen as the next victim. It's then revealed that Walter is also a civilian, so the two mafias are still in the group. When the chair pushes him into the orb, Walter finds himself reliving the day he made his mistake. He tries to warn his men about the ambush, but it's too late, soon his team is surrounded by the enemy and Walter's soldiers begin dying all over the place. Sometimes the simulation makes the walls disappear to allow even more enemies to attack and cause very cruel deaths, like a soldier that gets killed by a fire. Eventually Walter comes out to shoot as many enemies as possible, but seeing the bodies of his men and the wall disintegrating causes him to accept his time has come. At that moment the enemy shoots Walter and kills him. Seconds later, it's time for another nightfall and the drones choose Laura, who gets her introduction a little too late. She used to have a house, a good job, and a loving family, but unfortunately she became an alcoholic and denied any help from her husband. Soon their son died and her husband left her, so she was left alone. She wasn't brave enough to self-delete, and her greatest fear is heights. For more than eight years Laura didn't leave the house, until one night when she was by the road. It turns out she was the one that saved Ivan and his friend. She also was forced by the driver's parents to lie during the trial. Ivan is shocked to hear this but still forgives her because now his name is clean. The game then announces that Laura is also a civilian and before the chair takes her away, she tells Ivan she hopes he wins. In the orb, the simulation puts Laura on a plane that is flying toward a creepy dark cloud. This darkness attacks the plane and the damage makes it start falling as the walls and the ceiling begin to disintegrate. A stewardess helps Laura with the seatbelt but the darkness suddenly takes her as well. Little by little the plane comes apart and eventually Laura falls to her death. 
afterward the players are given four minutes to make the next vote. Constantine immediately says it's Ivan, which triggers an argument that makes Eli realize Kieran and Kate may know each other. Kieran accuses Constantine of being Mafia, but Ivan says it's Eli. The group soon is divided, Constantine, Luca, and Eli vote for Ivan, Kate and Kieran vote for Constantine, and Ivan votes for Eli. The rules say the chosen player must have an absolute majority, so it's announced the vote shall be redone but only using the three voted names. Luca changes his vote to Constantine and the other four keep their same choice, so Constantine shocks everyone by voting for himself. It's the first time ever in the show that someone votes for themselves, and more surprisingly, Constantine turns out to be Mafia. When he's put in the simulation, Constantine appears on a set of stairs, where a man bumps into him and calls him Grandpa. The word angers Constantine, but he suddenly starts coughing as he finds a bunch of mirrors that reveal he's aging rapidly. It gets hard for him to go downstairs, but as he reaches the end of his life, Constantine begins laughing and explains he's cheated. Apparently dying of old age isn't his greatest fear, in fact he considers it the most beautiful death. Then another nightfall arrives and the drones choose the next victim. Ivan is the picked name, and he turns out to be a civilian as well. Kate begins to cry but Ivan says it's okay because his name was clean. He sends his mother his love, apologizing for not being a good son before the orb takes him. The simulation puts Ivan inside a prison, and while the guards guide him to his execution, Ivan imagines he's on a beach with his mother again. The guards quickly shoot and Ivan dies instantly. Now there are four people left in the game, including one mafia, and the players have two minutes to vote. While the group argues over who to vote for, Eli accuses Kieran and Kate of being a couple, and Kieran gets his introduction. He's a young polemicist that joined the game because a friend dared him to. He met Kate a day before the game started, and she felt so comfortable around him that revealed all her fears, height, desert, and snakes. Since Kate grew up in an orphanage, she thinks nobody will protect her in this world. Neither of them knew they would meet again in the game. The players keep arguing for a while and they end up running out of time, so the computer makes the choice. Kate is the next victim, and she's also a civilian. The chair quickly takes her away, causing Kieran to run and jump on it too so they can go into the orb together, which has never happened before. The simulation puts the duo in a stormy area, standing on a floor made of glass. If they move the glass cracks, so Kieran rushes to Kate and they begin running together as the glass comes apart behind them. Suddenly the floor breaks under their feet and they fall, only to land on a black desert. They see a triangle of light on top of a mountain, and since Constantine had mentioned it during the arguments, they decide to follow it. As they move, the rocks around them begin transforming into big snakes that begin chasing them. The duo runs as fast as possible only to encounter a huge monster which represents Kieran's fear, which is losing Kate. Kieran tells Kate to hide before he starts throwing rocks at the monster, rolling around whatever he needs to dodge an attack. When they come closer to the mountain, the triangle of light burns the creature, and Kieran notices a second triangle hanging on the monster's neck. He runs up the monster's leg and steals the triangle, then he uses it to reflect the mountain light and burn the creature down to ashes. Afterward, the duo sees a rock formation shaped like a face that has a triangle on one eye. They put the monster's triangle on the other eye and the rocks move to reveal a light beam that guides them toward a house. When they enter, Kate is shocked to see this is the orphanage she grew up in and she can see her mother handing her to an employee. It's then revealed that among her other fears, Kate is also scared of knowing why her parents left her. Kieran reminds her this isn't real and explains that her parents don't define her, so Kate has to work on accepting that. Suddenly their surroundings disintegrate and the duo comes face to face with the game master, meaning there's a civilian and a mafia left in the game. While the show cuts to an ad before revealing the winner, the game master explains that Constantine had been working for him to find a way to destroy the game by beating it using Kira and Kate. The game master reveals the duo is still trapped in the simulation and explains that watchers are tired of seeing death, so he decided to showcase their love instead. After thanking them for participating, the game master lets them live and the duo leaves the show safely. Sometime later, Eli returns to his family and reveals he was the mafia, so he's won all the money. In the end, he managed to live 10 months instead of the three they diagnosed. Luke leaves the game alive but with no money, so he decides to disinherit his grandchildren and donate everything to Kate's orphanage. Ivan's mother gets flowers every day in memory of her son, and Kieran and Kate visit Constantine's grave to thank him for ending the game. However, it's not over yet and Kieran soon signs up for the game again.
Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.